Well, we have finished yesterday in, uh, and we have seen that H2 is a free model of uh, rank 22. What we, we want to show now to finish the proof, so um, we start today in showing so, um, that um, if you remember, you want to see that the H2, SZ, S is always my K3 surface, is isometric to three copies of U and two copies of E8. Okay. Where you remember U was um, the parabolic lattice, so I just write down the, the form. And uh, E8 is just the lattice associated to the Dinkin diagram E8. Okay, this was the two lattice. Just to recall that. So to do that, let's recall, uh, start with some um, lattice theory, something very soft, but just to, to, to fix notation and uh, definitions. So recall um, some uh, basic facts on lattices. So just make a, a small parenthesis from K3 surfaces. So I will take um, L, uh, a free Z module, or a lattice, say, is a free Z module. L is what we have seen uh, for H2. We have seen there's no torsion and it's a free Z module with a symmetric bilinear form, so it's a definition, with um, a symmetric bilinear form that I will denote by B from L to L to Z. Okay, so I will always come with the bilinear form. And uh, just some definition, so we say that um, that uh, L is non-degenerate if uh, uh, the matrix, uh, let's say M of B, has uh, that M different from zero, which is be all the case uh, uh, for me will be always non-degenerate lattice. And uh, we call, um, as often it is done, that M in absolute value, the discriminant of L. Okay, one should be careful with the discriminant group, but uh, we'll talk about that later. Then unimodular. If uh, the determinant of M is equal to 1, and even if uh, the bilinear form applied to X in X is 2Z, which for example is the case for K3 surfaces, uh, what else? And otherwise we say that uh, L is odd. the lattice. What else about definitions? The signature, of course, is a signature over R of L is uh, the signature of uh, B on uh, L tensor R, and um, if uh, L is non-degenerate, 
we denote it by S plus and S minus. So these are the positive eigenvalues, this is a negative one, so the one and the minus one. Um, then the notation again, if I write by L with a parenthesis M like this, this is again is the lattice L with the, the form of, let's call this B, M, X and Y equal to M times B, X and Y. I just multiply the, the form by, by a constant M. So M is, um, uh, or B, L, M, maybe it's better. M is, a, of course, a, let's say non-zero natural number, it could be in Z non-zero. Uh, okay, then uh, we have the notion of um, isometry. So the last uh, maybe notions, and then we will see uh, it anytime I need something, maybe I'll introduce it later. So L1, L2 lattices. Uh, we say that um, these are isometric. If, um, or oh, we have an isometry, if um, there is a, an isomorphism of uh, Z modules, uh, let's say F, from L1 to L2, which respects the bilinear form. So such that B2, so let's say maybe be even more precise, Sorry, I will write the two lattice L1, B1, and uh, L2, B2, so I precise the, the form. So B2 of, uh, uh, let me see, uh, B2 of the image of Fx, Fy, is equal to B1 of x and y. So it respects the, the linear form. And if L1 is equal to L2, equal to L, then uh, we have the isometry of the lattice L, and we denote it by OL. O of L isometries of n. Okay, some just, this terminology as I say, maybe we'll see later some more properties. Let's now go back to H2, SZ. We have seen it is a free Z model, so that uh, we have the first property. Then uh, it is in the lattice. So we have seen a, as the, is a free G model. And uh, with the intersection pairing, the cap product. You go from H2, as if you have seen already this uh, in the lecture by Julien in Z. Uh, let me write this um, explicitly. Alpha, beta, go to the integral as alpha wedge beta. Okay, this is. Um, so we have this intersection with the cap product, and uh, this is unimodular, Pancare duality. And uh, so with the intersection party is a lattice, is a unimodular lattice. Okay. 
Okay, it's a non-degenerate and it is unimodular. So now we want to understand how to, to see that um, it is isometric to this direct sum. Okay, we have uh, to, to look at the signature. <laughs> First of all, well, we have we know uh, so that is um, rank 22. Mother, we have seen that is of rank 22. Okay, so <laughs> the unimodular lattice, and um, we have um, for the signature uh, that s plus plus s minus is equal to 22. Okay, the, the signature of L. Uh, I think the definition is uh, S plus uh, S minus, okay? And then we need also um, a formula from topology that gives us uh, the, the um, trace of B, the, actually the, the connection with the, the trace of B and the, the signature. So this is called the topological index theorem. tells us that uh, the trace of uh, B, which is equal to S plus minus S minus, of course, S minus, so I think minus one eigenvalue, is equal to one third C1 square minus two C2, where C1 and C2 are the, the chair numbers. So C1 is the first chern class. So C1 is equal to C1 of S, is the first chern class. And in this case, is nothing else than minus the canonical divisor. So the ch first chern class of ta the tangent sheaf, tangent uh, bundle, but then you can just <coughs> do computation by using chern class. The property of chern class is the minus canonical <coughs> class. And C2 is just the key top of S, which is 24. So let us compute that. So we have that uh, S plus minus S minus is equal to, let's look at that. C1 square, well, we have seen it already several times, is a canonical class square, so it's zero. Minus, and then we have two times C2, so two times 24, equal minus 16. And then it's easy to see if you put both together. Both equalities. Together, one gets that S plus is equal to 3 and S minus is equal to 19. Okay, so we have a unimodular lattice with this um, signature. <laughs> now we have to, well, think about, I will now show that, that. Uh, uh, H2 is, is even, so again one should use a result from topology, but um, so we have the following fact, just take it as it is, so fact, H2 SZ is even, and let me just um, give, I would say, a justification of that, or just a bit of motivation, so or at least um, one can see that. Easily on curves. On irreducible curves. So a curve is a class on the Picard group, which is a, a narrow severity group, which is here inside. So just word in a second. And um, we have the genus formula. Uh, on curves, so consider the genus formula. for C in S irreducible. So what does the genus formula say? 
we say that the genus of C, this is not only for K3, but more in general, is equal to 1 plus a half C times Ks plus C square. So this is 0. And so you get that uh, C square is equal to G minus 2. So this is clearly even, so this is into Z. So it's one way maybe, at least to have one motivation for think that it, it's even. And um, it was also occasion to show you the genus formula that's very useful. It gives you the self-intersection of all curves on a K3. For example, you see again that if your genus is zero, self-intersection is minus two. So it's a rational curve of self-intersection minus two, and, and so on. <clears throat> So we have um, resuming an even unimodular lattices, lattice of signature 319. So we use now a um, result of Milner about classification of lattices. Theorem of, following theorem of Milner, let me just uh, formulate that. So <clears throat> we, oh, sorry, maybe I have to erase all the all the blackboard. Theorem of Milner. Take um, Theorem of Milner. So let um, L be a uh, unimodular indefinite. Um, let's say also non-degenerate maybe, just to, let's say, unimodular, non-degenerate. Uh, non-degenerate, yeah, unimodular, so this is unimodular, it's okay. Unimodular indefinite lattice. So this means that uh, S plus is positive and S minus is positive, okay? Then uh, the following holds. So if L um, is odd, so we have two cases, L odd, then L is isometric. So I write in this way, just uh, isomorphic, so this means in sense of lattice, so isometric, to some copy of the lattice one to the power M plus some copy of the lattice minus one to the power N. So M and uh, N, N uh, a natural number, both positive because it's indefinite. So when I we mean that writing that is a the lattice that I write in this way is just a rank one lattice with this uh, bilinear form. So just taking nothing else on the on the send the vector to a vector actually, and um, and uh, I take m copies of that and minus size is the same. So rank one lattice with this um, well it's very it's trivial with uh, this bilinear form. Um, this is an odd case. If L is even, then um, L is isomorphic to the following form, to some copies, let's say H, plus uh, some copies of E8. So H and, uh, sorry, U and E8 are exactly the lattice I was introducing before, with um, H and K are natural numbers, H is positive, 
because it's indefinite, and k is bigger equal than is um, bigger equal than zero. Can be zero. Okay, because this lattice is a senior to one one. So we call that. So signature of uh, u is one one. If one can check it, and signature of e eight. I take a negative definite is zero, eight. Okay, and in fact, one can show easily this is our both are of course even lattices. So for the H two of a K three, we are in the second case. Unimodular, it's okay. It's indefinite. It's fine. Even is also fine. So since H uh, two S Z is unimodular, indefinite. If this signature is equal 319 and even, then, uh, well, we find what we wanted, that our H2 SZ, I need three positive eigenvalues, so I get from U, it's the only possibility, and the rest, that uh, is 19, okay. which is 19, I get from uh, E8. So E8 uh, two times. Okay, And the interesting fact is, as I said, this does not depend on your K3. For all K3 surfaces, this is the, the sometimes this is called the, the K3 lattice. And the fact that this is unimodular is a very, is actually a very good property for, for many things. Um, but um, maybe to, to finish um, this, uh, this section on, uh, on the first properties of K3, or at least on the, on the H2, maybe I just finish by recalling the Hodge diamond. We know, we know, we know all the, all the, we computed all the Hodge numbers. And then uh, I will pass to subjectivity of Pyramid map and Torelli theorem. So, uh, so uh, to say, let's some word about the Hodge diamond. So this uh, finish, well, I put um, a square. We finished the proof where we started last time. Hodge diamond of a K3 surface. Okay, we have uh, H2SC, um, uh, which is the same as H2SZ tensorized by C, has then rank 22. And you have seen uh, yesterday and today in the, the lecture of Julian, the Hodge decomposition. So you know that H2SC decomposes as uh, A2-0 uh, plus uh, H11 flash H02. So we know since this is 22, this is one dimensional because it's generated by what we are calling omega s. Okay. So and here we have is also one dimensional. Remember for a K3 surface, one way to to characterize them is that you say there is only one hol global holomorphic two form which is never zero. So for example. If you study hyperkähler manifold, so you, it is a one way to, to say, to characterize them with this holomorphic two form. And so this is 20 dimensional. So we can uh, write down all the Hodge diamond, diamond and do it here. So we write down, we have H00, H01, H10. H02, H11, H20, and then let me make a mistake. H21, uh, H12, and then H22. Okay. This is one dimensional. Okay. This is a zero dimensional. I put close to that the dimension. This is also zero dimensional. We have seen this is one dimensional. This is one dimensional. It's 20 dimensional. And then for symmetry, this is zero. 
this is also zero, and this is one. And in fact, so you just need to read um, only one part of the diagram to have everything. So if you draw some line here. So this uh, symmetry comes from a killer manifold, which is a compact killer. So this gives you the symmetry of this part with this part of the black pole. And then you have here, you have the serve duality. So only this part gives you all information you need, actually. That I suggest by symmetry. And we'll see in a minute here is very, this, um, actually this group, um, well, the two are also important, but this in particular, because um, inside of that, uh, we will see the neuron severity group. Okay. Okay, let's say some word about period domain and Torelli theorem. That are maybe the most two famous results about K3. Let's talk about the period domain. And so about the projectivity of period map and Torelli theorem. Mm -hmm. So I will uh, more here, I will not uh, prove that. It's a uh, very would take uh, maybe all the time of the lectures, but give you some um, motivation where the period of a K3 lives and why Torelli is so important. While I would like then to maybe starting today or tomorrow to talk about automorphism, where you will see the power of uh, Torelli theorem. Okay, let's um, uh, remark that. So we have seen, uh, as I was writing here, that uh, fixed notation H0 omega 2s or OSKS is generated by omega s, which is this global holomorphic two form. Then uh, the bilinear form um, on uh, H2, this intersection pairing, can be extended. to H2SC, uh, I've worked at some point, H2SC, just uh, H2SZ tensorized by C. And let's compute uh, the following ring. I'll do some easy computation, take omega s and compute b, omega s, omega s bar, okay? Well, this is um, by the definition of this uh, bilinear form, which I'll do with b, is omega s, wedge omega s bar. Well, now omega s can be written in local coordinates as uh, alpha times dz1 wedge dz2, alpha holomorphic. So when I write down again this uh, integral, I get something positive.
then uh, S alpha square. This is one, why to this is two? This is one bar, why to this is two bar? Well, what was saying again also this morning by Julien, and this is positive. I have here just a, it's a volume form, so that's positive. And if I do the same computation, exactly the same way, with omega s, omega s, I'll just do the same. This is easily give you zero. So these are the <coughs> conditions that one gets on the, on the two form. And um, also, let's remark the following. That um, if gamma is in H11, then of S, so it's a 1 1 class, then I can do the computation B omega S gamma is equal to 0. Okay, just to write down in a DZ1, a wedge DZ2 bar, etc., and you see that it's 0. So this implies that uh, uh, H11 is orthogonal with respect to the bilinear form to H20 plus H02. So remark here that I make a direct sum as a vector spaces, <laughs> but these two are not orthogonal for the, for the pairing, because I was showing there, if I do B omega S omega S bar is positive. So orthogonality with respect to the, the bilinear form is V H1. And um, so the period, So my, my period, omega s, which is the two form, is called the period of the, of the K3. So I will say the two form of the period is the same. So the line P omega s Let's say the class of omega s, which is uh, nothing else than the line, spina omega s, belong to the following space, belong to the projectivization of, uh, I have to introduce the marking, well, I will do it later, of H2 S Z. Let's write it this way, tensor C, so we never forget uh, somehow that this is a lattice, such that, so I will uh, write just uh, B omega s, omega s, I just write uh, down as omega s, omega s, forgetting the, the B at some point, it does not matter, I mean it's always the, the same uh, bilinear form I take. And uh, so this is um, equal to zero, and omega s, omega s bar is positive. Okay, and um, now we have to introduce a marking because somehow, um, well, this H2 is still in some sense attached to my K3. I would like to forget that in some way and go to the lattice lambda K3. So let's uh, define now a marking so that we go to the direction of period domain. Well, the period domain somehow is already here. Definition, don't, so a marking, S is over the K3, a marking, is uh, the choice of an isometry uh, phi from H2 SZ to uh, lambda K3. Well, lambda K3, I say, is the K3 lattice, so is this um, three copy of U and two copy of A. Okay, so with the marking, uh, we have then the following. So, so that um, this gives 
if you go to the complexified, so you have a phi. Let's maybe sometimes one put a small c here, but I will forget all most of the time. You go to, from H two S C to lambda k three tensor c and to your class of omega s. You associate the image there. Phi of, or maybe just write them, just to recall it, just a C omega s, this line, phi of C omega s. So to, you associate to the, your two form that you have on the K3, this um, point in this space. Okay. And um, even more, I was just uh, considering lines. If you, if you remember, in fact, so this two form is uniquely determined up to constant. So you have, that's why actually you take always this uh, multiple. So, so in this way we get the following. So let, um, Omega, I will call it that way, is a set of points of uh, P, lambda K3 tensor C. So remember, this is a P, this is a rank 22, this is a P21, such that omega, omega bar is positive, uh, omega, omega, or sometimes we don't just write well, omega square is equal to zero. And if you look uh, at the dimension of this, uh, this uh, period domain, so this is what's called period domain. Well, this is a P21. This gives you an equation. It's a quadric, and it's an open subset. So even more, let's write in the following way. This is the set. So let's call this uh, the point Z0, Z21. So it's the point Z0, this 21, just to make it explicit, such that um, you have um, z0 square plus z1 square plus z2 square minus z3, 21 equal to 0. And uh, z0 square, this is the first condition, this is the, the second condition, this gives you the quadric, sorry. And this is the, the first one. So you see, well, this is a, an open subset in the analytic topology of, um, of a quadric. The analytic topology. Of a quadric of P21. So this modular space is 20 dimensional. And uh, well, uh, as I did the computation before, for a K3 surface, a phi of C omega s belongs uh, to, um, to this domain. So, uh, by the computation we did, if um, for S a K three surface with marking phi. We have um, that phi of C omega s belong uh, to this omega, to this space.
So omega is the period domain of marked K3 surfaces. K3 surfaces. Okay, so sometimes for the moment you cannot get rid of the of the marking. We will talk about that in a moment. Um, so not only this is true, it's not only true that um, the two form is a point of this omega, but there is a deep result of um, Todorov and CU, which is called the subjectivity of the period map. So this means that um, if omega is a point here, then there is a, a mark K3 surface. Um, S phi, such that this omega is the period. Three so fail, let's say S phi such that phi of uh, C omega S is equal to omega. Okay, now let's think about uh, we want to think about the, the unicity somehow of this, uh, this K3. So think about the following fact. So, remarks, let's say this is a very strong theorem that uh, in the proof you use the fact that um, CO show that uh, any K3 is scalar and then well, one can, it's a quite long, long and deep proof. But let's do the following remark. So, um, if uh, omega is in omega and we have a, uh, Two mark three surfaces. Let's say S uh, phi and uh, S prime phi prime, such that phi of uh, omega S is equal to omega, and also phi of, uh, sorry, phi prime of C omega S prime equal to omega. Well, let's look uh, at these uh, two marking. Well, the two marking do the following. So, we have, um, Let's go from H2 Xz to lambda K3. Or well, let's say back in this way, we have phi here. And we have H2 X prime Z, phi prime, then go to lambda K3. So if uh, one consider now the, the combination of the two. For example, well, let me take uh, this one and then the, the, the converse of that. So, phi prime by phi. So, this gives you an isometry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. Goes from um, H2, SZ, to H2 prime, F prime Z is an isometry. 
And if you look at the period, since uh, we have this condition, so such that phi prime minus one composed by phi, if I look on C, of omega s, so this period, C omega s, go to omega s prime. So we have an isomaty of these two lattes with these properties. And we have even more that's come from Torelli theorem. So we can even show the following, which is uh, called the weak Torelli theorem. So we can show even more that um, that uh, S is isomorphic to S prime by the following theorem, so which is a uh, weak Torelli. So, so take S uh, isomorphic to S prime, so S S prime are key three. This if and only if, there is a isometry uh, phi from um, S Z H to S prime Z such that um, isometry such that um, um, the period of the first one is equal to to the second one. And uh, an isometry with this property is called a Hodge isometry. So it, it preserves in particular so the Hodge decomposition if you go on C. So this uh, tells us that uh, up to the marking the K3 is unique. So on, on a point, what can you change? Actually, you can only change uh, the marking, but not the K3. And I will give you in a minute also the strong Torelli theorem that say even something more. You put some condition more on phi, you can even more establish a connection between this, this isomorphism and uh, the isometry that you have here. But um, let's do maybe first some remark. Because at some point, maybe it's interesting to get rid of the marking. So <clears throat> observe now that um, if uh, one change the marking, on a K3 surface S. So this means that I have a phi from H2, I'm sorry, phi is always a notation, but, but I must change the notation of the a small phi, H2 S Z to lambda K3. And then another marking, let's say phi prime from H2 S Z to lambda K3. Then, if you do first a phi minus one and you compose it with phi prime or the other direction, but no matter, you get an isometry of lambda k3. So this belongs in an isometry of lambda k3. So if you want to just to parameterize um, k3 up to isometries, so the quotients Just to take the quotient of uh, omega by this. So one considers 
the 10 to 20 dimensional quotient omega modulo the isometry of lambda k3. And this is the moduli space of uh, k3 surfaces. So to each point here, one get a k3 surface, and the converse is uh, also true. And again, uh, remember this is 20 dimensional. I insist on that because, uh, so I was, uh, most of the time, the projective case, and then sometimes I was saying, okay, but K3 are not all projective, so you can consider just, um, so the complex, all K3, but all, are all K3, but not all projective. So this parameterizes all K3 surfaces, projective one and not. And we will see that, in fact, it, when you impose the condition of being projective, you go to something of one dimension less, which is um, nothing dimensional. So remark, we will see some example later. Um, projective K3 surfaces are parameterized by a 19 dimensional space, 19 dimensional domain. So we'll see that uh, here uh, the point is that you choose your period that you can run on the old the lattice uh, with that condition. But as soon as you ask that it's projective, somehow you fix uh, an ample class on that. And then you cannot uh, leave the period moving everywhere. So it mu must move in the orthogonal complement of this polarization. And so that uh, you get there not more P21, but P20 with the, old, the same condition. And so that's why you get uh, 19 dimensional. Okay, but let me now, in any case, I want to just formulate the, the Torelli theorem that um, something, give you a strength connection between uh, K3 surfaces and lattice theory. So, theorem. Let's say strong Torelli theorem. So let's consider the following. Let's assume that S and S prime are K3 surfaces. And um, assume there is an isometry. Call again, change the name again. Sigma from H2 SZ to H2 S prime Z. Such as that. Well, first of thing, I want it is a Hodge. So this is an isometry, sorry. Such as that. So I want that is a Hodge isometry. This means what I was telling before. So sigma of C omega S is equal to C omega S prime. So say this means also that the Hodge decomposition is preserved. So the two zero space go to the two zero and zero two and one one. Then second is effective. What does it mean effective? So there are different ways to, to say that. Let's say that um, it sends a killer class to a killer class or to preserve the killer cone. Send a killer class to a killer class, or sometimes you find uh, the killer cone to a killer cone. This is equivalent. So you have an effective isometry, and um, that's all. Then there is a unique um,
Then uh, we have a unique um, isomorphism between S and S prime, such that if you look at, um, at the action of the lattice, it's exactly equal to sigma. There is a unique uh, f from s to s prime isomorphism, or let's say s prime to s. Such that um, the action of f star, so the pull boy that conforms on, um, so the f, so that f star from H2 SSV, from H2 S prime Z, F prime is equal to sigma. Okay. And um, as I say, this, um, this um, uh, in fact, this isomorphism so is, is, is uniquely determined by sigma. So if you, if you look at, um, at the theorem, then, um, then any time, in fact, you have an isomorphism of K3, you have this, um, this condition. So the, um, and it's of with that properties, we have this condition. So the difference with the weak Torelli is that you have that, and then tell you somehow where your Keller class goes. And there I cannot fix that, so I can have that Keller class is in one cone and go, does not go into the other Keller cone, so that's, uh, I have to apply some reflection to get the isomorphism. But here you can control it because you say that I want the Keller class to go again to, to the Keller cone of the, of the other K3. And um, somehow um, we will see application of, um, of this Torelli theorem. So Torelli theorem has many, many important applications. But uh, for us, let me just state as a remark. So Torelli theorem has a important, even fundamental application. in the study of automorphism of K3. Of uh, out S, which is the set of F from S to S, such that F is biolomorphic, for example, or biregular, if you want it. Okay, because, uh, well, replace the S prime by S, then it somehow tells you that uh, if I can construct Hodge is isometry with some special properties, okay, with that one. Then I can say something about automorphism of, uh, of, um, of the K3. So in particular, knowing some uh, um, properties of lattice, isometry of lattices, give you back some properties of uh, automorphism of the K3. Uh, let's maybe... <clears throat> so I hope I will maybe start today, talk about automorphism, but I just wanted to... to for a moment, just to come back to the fact that uh, I was writing there that uh, if, uh, if we consider only projective K3, the moduli space is 19 dimensional. So let me do some example of uh, how one counts moduli. Just convince you that 19 is a good uh, number of moduli that one can expect for projective K3. Just in Tomorrow in the exercise section, for example, you will have to do some exercise in this sense. So, so some examples of um, dimension counting. For K3. As I said, it's a, it's a good exercise to do because uh, we do it with a surface that you already know. We have seen a lot of geometric examples. Uh, you have seen the quartic, you have seen the complete intersection, 2, 3, and 2, 2, 2, the double plane. And then we will see that all these examples uh, um, nine, are 19 dimensional. So take uh, uh, K3 quartics in P3. So quartic in P3. So these are, for the generic quartic, are K3. We have seen is our example, the, the easy example we gave at the beginning. 
Well, so the space of quartics, so um, a quartic in P3 depends on, uh, well, you can remember as you want, so you just take a, I, I remember this way, the cohomology A0, OP3, O4. This is uh, the space of quartic of P3 with a big H. This is a dimension. So this is 4 plus 3, 7 over 5. <coughs> so it's um, 5 times 6 times 7 divided by 6. So it's 35. But if you consider all the quartics, you are not very happy because, of course, you can apply a projective transformation that's sending a quartic to another one. So these somehow are equivalent. But uh, consider projected transformation. And so the dimension of uh, as an algebraic group of P, G, L, 4C, or 3C as you want. I don't know how you want. This is uh, 16 minus 1. So this is projective dimension. And so if here I write the projective dimension is a is a 35 minus 1 equal 34. So the number of moduli for quartic A3 and P3 is, a, well, the dimension of this space, which is 34, minus 15, which is a very happy comes back to be 19. Okay. And, um, you can do very similar computation. Uh, I just take one minute and then I stop uh, to do, 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 sorry, the poll, sorry for over time. So one can do a very similar computation. For you remember, I wrote S23 in P4. This is a complete intersection. S222 in P5. And uh, S double plane of P2. And always get 19. Okay. You cannot do that for, well, for Kummer, you can do that, the computation, but Kummer are not so generic. It's not so really, well, Kummer has a high Picard number because you have a lot of curves, so it depends. The moduli space is much smaller somehow, very special. But this is get always 19 moduli, and then after the break, I will tell you a bit about the, the moduli space in, in that cases. Okay. 